the narcissist and their flying monkeys hello everyone and welcome back to the channel if you are new to the channel i'm elizabeth shaw and this channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of those people you might have been dealing with within your life how to handle those people if you cannot go no contact and how to recover from narcissistic abuse if you do find the information on this channel helpful please do subscribe this video is about the narcissist and their flying monkeys Flying Monkeys is a term that comes from the movie, the film Wizard of Oz, where the witch sent out her lieutenants, her army of flying monkeys to do the damage on Dorothy, the lion, the tin man and the scarecrow to do the witch's dirty work for her. Flying Monkeys are people who acts on behalf of the narcissist to help the narcissist some form of smear campaign against a third party to help the narcissist bring down a third party. Flying monkeys are people that the narcissist recruit to keep people from being aware of the narcissist's true behaviour and the narcissist's true intentions. It's a case of abuse by proxy, I'll link the video up here. When a narcissist can no longer control you, they will control others to control how they see you, how they behave around you, the things that other people do to you. The narcissist converts flying monkeys into the narcissist's reality. They convert the flying monkeys into the narcissist's way of thinking about the world and the people around them. Through things like divide and conquer, through things like triangulation, which is a form of divide and conquer, to get people to admire the narcissist and do what the narcissist wants them to do. So who can become a flying monkey? This can be anyone within your life and within the narcissist's life. It can be friends, it can be family members, it can be in a workplace, it can be a boss, it can be co-workers, it can be absolutely anyone in your life. It can be neighbours. Narcissists can recruit so many people to become flying monkeys through many manipulative methods if the narcissist wishes to do so. One of the worst forms is when they recruit your own family members to become a flying monkey against you. A narcissist will not only isolate by future faking and move into a different part of the country, a different state, a different part of the world to isolate you from friends and family. They can also use that divide and conquer and triangulation to gain the family members into the narcissist's way of thinking about you, which can hit incredibly hard once you realise what is actually happening to you. These people are often either naive and we can't always be the ones to teach them as you know within yourself sometimes we have to wake up in our own time as to what is happening to us the kinds of people that are out there in the world and how to control our emotions how to create our boundaries to protect ourselves from these kinds of people so some people are just naive other people are getting that idolisation, they're getting that love bombing and a narcissist is very good at only showing people the bits that they want those people to see and if the bits of the narcissist come out that they don't want those people to sh see, they are very good at shifting the blame or projecting or gaslighting to deny people the reality of what they've just seen and a narcissist is very quick at lifting somebody back up, at love bombing them again or idolising them again, at 
selling a side to of themselves to those people that the people believe in to distract the side of the narcissist that is dangerous and toxic and hurtful towards other people. So you can have people that genuinely have only really seen the good side and because they might be naive or because they don't understand what a red flag is, there might be something that they've questioned, but because this person is treating them so well, they don't see the narcissist to be at fault and they might not know the third person that the narcissist is using that person as a flying monkey against so they are going to be more likely to believe what the narcissist is telling them than about the third person than a third person that they don't know or you can have people that have simply fawned to the narcissist behavior people who can see what the narcissist is capable of and daren't step out of line for fear of what will happen to them or they might not see what the narcissist is capable of. The narcissist might be threatening their friends or their family or their job, or they might be threatening them in some way. So people fawn to the narcissist's behaviour out of fear of repercussions from the narcissist of what will happen to them. I think one of the worst is when a narcissist recruits a narcissist, and this often happens in narcissistic family dynamics because when the narcissist recruits flying monkeys that are just naive or being loved or bombed or fawning to the narcissist's behaviour, they usually have some empathy there. So they would only take it so far because that empathy, that guilt, that shame would stop them on some level. No matter how much they fear that narcissist, at some point they might step out. When they recruit, not always, not all will, will step out, but when they recruit narcissistic people to do their bidding for them, this is dangerous territory because that narcissist they've recruited also lacks in the empathy to care and they're usually using that narcissist to gain the attention. They usually want something from the narcissist, which is why they will become a flying monkey from the narcissist. It's narcissist using narcissist, which doesn't always end very well for anyone in that dynamic. So how does the narcissist get to those people to believe them and turn people into flying monkeys often through lies but they tell these lies with such believable truths that they get the flying monkeys to believe in the lies that the narcissist is selling them or the narcissist might deny any wrongdoing on their part and pass the blame onto the third party to get those flying monkeys onto the narcissist's side. They will deflect anything that's happened. They will deflect any potential negative actions that the narcissist has done onto that third person, passing the blame onto the third person. They will project, again, anything that the narcissist has done. They will twist the story around and create a narrative that that third person was the one that has done it. The, any intentions that the narcissist has, they will project that it was that third person's intentions. Any errors in judgment that that narcissist has had, they will project that it was the third person that's done it. Any mistakes that the narcissist has made, they will project that it was that third person that's done it to escape accountability and to gain flying monkeys onto the narcissist's side against the third person. They will gaslight the flying monkeys. They will completely change the narrative of the story to the way the narcissist wants to sell it to people in such a believable fashion that people believe the narcissist's reality and doubt the third person who the narcissist is gaining an army of flying monkeys against to help destroy that third person who's actually innocent. The narcissist gets flying monkeys to harass, to threaten, to stalk, to gossip about 
the third person. They, they often, most people do like a bit of gossip and gossip does die down and narcissist knows this and they know exactly what kind of gossip to twist to their advantage and they know which kinds of people are going to be more likely to gossip to speak to first so that that gossiper then in some way does the dirty work for the narcissist the narcissist tells one person that they know is going to gossip to everybody else they're stepping they're creating the drama but they're stepping away from the drama and stepping away from responsibility because they tell that one person that one person especially in a workplace that one person then goes and tells 10 people so if you've you might have done something not to harm anybody or not to do anything but something that's against company policies that perhaps you regret doing you shouldn't have done whatever it is that the narcissist knows about and if you try to call that narcissist down on some form of abusive behavior even though your behavior didn't harm anybody else and you regret your behavior if the narcissist knows about that they will tell the one person that will gossip about it and that gossip will then spread it to everybody else while the narcissist enjoys the drama and the conflict that they've created without the other flying monkeys most of those don't even realize that the narcissist was behind it all so the narcissist has got another scapegoat there if things go wrong the narcissist can then scapegoat the person that they got to gossip in the first place and gossips are a very handy tool for narcissistic people most people can have gossips at some point in their life and most people will feel bad for doing so and will try not to do it again and will have some understanding that we don't really know what's going on in other people's lives we shouldn't make judgments or opinions based on other people's traumas or other people's difficulties or other people's actions the only thing we should do is call people out on abusive behavior because it's wrong people who hurt other people that needs calling out and people who have genuinely made a mistake will not do it again narcissists will just blame someone else and recycle the same pattern of behaviour. Narcissists can often bait you into gaining flying monkeys against you without you even realising. They can cause some sort of argument or conflict in front of other people. They can invalidate you in front of people. They can provoke you in front of other people to get that emotional response. So they can later on use that against you with the gossips. Can you remember when they? And they will emphasise on your reaction so that people are focused on how you reacted and people forget or the narcissist has done it in such a subtle way. People don't see how the narcissist provoked that insecurity within you, provoked that emotional response from you. And they drain you, they do so many things running in the background to get you to the point where you are no longer responding in a logical manner. The narcissist does so many things in the background that you end up responding in that emotional manner to help them in their smear campaigns against you and gathering those flying monkeys to help within those smear campaigns against you. If you've ever been depressed in your life, if you've ever been depressed, if you've ever been to the doctors about depression, if you've ever had antidepressants for anything, if you're the kind of person that wants to keep things personal and that narcissist knows about it, the narcissist will go spreading it to everybody and everyone and they will exaggerate. It doesn't matter how depressed you've been depression is depression they will exaggerate it all to not help you but to play the victim to claim how much they've tried to help you but they can no longer cope with you so that the narcissist gains the support and the sympathy from those around them while you're left trying to pick up the pieces of your life that the narcissist is the one that actually shattered in the first place or if you 
like a drink. The narcissist will exaggerate this into the fact that you have a drinking problem. If you like to have a bet on the horses, the narcissist will exaggerate this into you have a gambling problem. If you like to own a nice wardrobe, the narcissist will twist this into you have a spending problem, which is often the narcissist with the drinking problem, the spending problem, the gambling, gambling problem, or the spending problem, the narcissist is obvious, is usually using your money and blowing it all, but they will, they will twist the story so that the narcissist is the victim in that story. On that last video I did yesterday on future faking, explains one way a narcissist will financially abuse somebody, I'll link that video up here, will financially abuse somebody but to the outside world it looks like you're the one that's financially abused them. Narcissists are very good at starting a smear campaign and gathering flying monkeys without you even realising you're being played in that way. And they will paint you out to be a liar so when you try and tell your side of the story the narcissist has already got in there painting you out to be a liar. They will paint you out to be abusive everything that the narcissist has done to you they will be telling people you did to them some narcissists might believe this some might not either way it's wrong but because it's happened they are very convincing in the way they tell the story they just twist it round into that you were the perpetrator and they were the victim so that they can gain the sympathy while you're left trying to pick up the pieces of your life so why do narcissists gain flying monkeys? Because they want to keep their abusive behaviour, their toxic be behaviour, their negative behaviour, their mistakes, their breaking of the rules hidden from society. They want to escape accountability for their actions by passing all the responsibility on to somebody else and the more they can gain those flying monkeys to help support their case the less they are going to be held accountable for their behavior especially those that will have friends with people in authority and some narcissists do have tight-knit friends within the authority to escape being held responsible for their own behaviour, their own destructive behaviour of other people. They do it by playing the victim so that they can gain that attention, gain that admiration, gain that sympathy, that belief that they are special and they can do it to play the hero again for that attention to gain that belief that they are special to gain that admiration of how much they've helped somebody out that's been so destructive towards them narcissists whatever they do is either to distract people from their true behavior from the narcissist's true behavior or to gain attention to gain that admiration to fill their own needs up to put other people down to feel better about who they are as a person to disguise from themselves and those around them the, the things that they are capable of doing in such destructive abusive ways so what can you do if you are surrounded by flying monkeys or just even one narcissist and a flying monkeys and it is devastating it is draining to live through so taking care of yourself is an absolute must if you need to rest rest do not be too hard on yourself it is vital you take care of yourself if you've got flying monkeys or a narcissist coming at you take care of yourself get your rest create your dreams create your hobbies tackle one task at a time get something to give you the motivation to keep going find some sort of sense of humor whatever that sense of humor is to you it is far from a funny subject but if you can somehow find a sense of humor in something to pick your spirits back up to lift yourself back up out of the situation 
that the narcissist is putting you in because they might be able to put you in that situation. You can and you will find a way out of that situation. You have got to be the one that takes care of you. You've got to be the one that finds the things that works for you to get yourself into a place where the narcissist and their flying monkeys can no longer touch you. And it's incredibly difficult when you are drained. It is incredibly difficult if you are isolated from support. And it's hard because in one way you've not only have you had your reality gaslighted and stolen from you throughout the relationship, when you are fighting to get your truth, the narcissist is stealing that from you with those flying monkeys. It's, it's horrible when someone is stealing your reality and your truth as you're trying to piece your life back together. So self-care is an absolute must. For things like meditation, things like yoga, things like reading books, positive books that are going to help lift your spirit, learning about the disorder, learning about what people do so that you are aware to what is happening, what might happen is always a good idea because without the knowledge we can't always defend ourselves. Sometimes it can bring you down so you've got to find something to do afterwards that picks you back up. Trying to talk to people that have been through it, that can support you through it. And a lot of the time we can make a lot of online friends from across the world that we wouldn't have known without being in this situation that are amazing and supportive because they've lived through it or are going through it. And there's so much advice and ideas to try to find the ones that work for you. And it's actually great connecting with people from around the world and there is a very big support network, there's a very big community um, now of survivors pulling together, helping each other out and it is, it is a lovely community. So finding the right support for you, finding the people that help you, people that bring you down, that's not the kind of environment you want to be in, surrounding yourself with people and it often helps by creating those new friendships online. If you've been isolated and you've not got the support of the friendships around you, it can be quite nerve wracking going back out there and starting new hobbies and making new friends and those red flags that sometimes aren't red flags are in your face and you might not feel ready. So building your confidence up online helps you have to shift keep those online friends by all means but you have to shift to then getting back out there and making friends person to person just by starting to smile at people starting to say hello to people if you can pick something up on someone that you can play pay a genuine compliment to it actually helps you feel better within yourself and you can start those conversations going just remember you don't have to please everybody you don't have to be liked by everybody it's about finding the people where you want the similar sort of things out of life and that give and take in communication and within the dynamics of any relationship one of the hurtful things that can happen is in this dynamic if you start speaking out about the things you've been through is when you get that rather hypocritical person and we can all be hypocritical at times but when you get that hypocritical person that doesn't understand that that blames you for victimizing a narcissist and it's it can be quite confusing when someone comes at you blaming you for victimizing a narcissist for saying that you shouldn't be calling someone out on their abusive behavior it can get you because this is what narcissists are doing narcissists twist the story and blame it on the on you and get their flying monkeys to help you're not speaking out to get the narcissist. The narcissist is usually doing this to gain those fine monkeys to hurt you any way they can. You're not doing that. You're doing it to 
share your experience and to recover from what you've been through and gain the understanding and clarity of what you've been through. And by a person saying that you shouldn't be calling out a narcissist, they are actually defending the narcissist. They're actually a flying monkey that is protecting the narcissist because a narcissist is a narcissist. They are abusive. If we don't start calling them out, they are going to continue with their behaviour People aren't going to have the awareness to recognise what is happening to them. People aren't going to have the awareness beforehand to not get into the situation in the first place. It needs calling out so people can have understanding of their own boundaries, of their own emotions, so they don't get entangled up in one, with one in the first place. As for treatment of a narcissist so far one hasn't been discovered although people are working on it that's something else that is for the people who are working in that area to try and find to try and help a narcissist i do not recommend you as a person try and help a narcissist because as you already know helping them often sinks you so until there is a way around this the thing we can do is protect ourselves, teach people to protect themselves from these kinds of people and walk with the right kind of people and create a life that they do deserve. So things you can do when you've got flying monkeys and narcissists come and get you. Become emotionally unpredictable to their behaviour. A narcissist knows your strengths, they know your weaknesses, they know your vulnerabilities, they know exactly what to bait you with, they know exactly what to prod and poke you with to get that reaction from you, to blame it on you, to then go to all the gossips and tell people how you've reacted. Although they miss out the part of how you reacted, they just tell people how you behaved. So you have to become emotionally unpredictable. People do hurt our feelings. We have feelings because that stops us from hurting other people. We have empathy because that stops us from hurting other people. People do hurt our feelings. So that is something we have to deal with, preferably not around the narcissist. When we have to recognise what insecurity, what strength, what vulnerability they are trying to provoke within us to get that emotion. We then have to give the narcissist nothing nada diddly squat give the narcissist nothing when the narcissist or the flying monkey is out of the vicinity you can scream you can cry you can shout you can deal then with that emotional reaction and work out what it is they used against you and see if you can change your perception on that insecurity change your pr approach on that insecurity change how you feel about yourself within that or change the memory that's connected to whatever it is sorry not change the memory change the meaning to the memory of whatever's connected that they pulled you in on to get those emotions to get that emotional rise out of you sometimes when people are doing this in front of you it's very very difficult and people do seem to like to say nobody can make you feel that way, which is what narcissists will say. No one can make you feel that way. But yes, they can. You have feelings. That's why you have feelings. People can hurt feelings. And what we should be saying is, why would you want to make someone feel that way? Why would you want to hurt somebody else's feelings? So when it's always best not to say anything, but when someone is coming at you with nobody can make you feel that way the simple answer is no actually it's not nobody can make me feel that way it's why would someone want to make me feel that way you're passing the blame onto me for having an emotion that we all have in life we all have emotions so do not pass the blame onto me for having an emotion my emotions are mine yes I have to regulate my emotions. I have to use my mind to control my emotions. I have to work out what my emotions are telling me. I am responsible for my own emotions. I am not responsible for how 
they made me feel. They are responsible for making me feel that way. Why would someone want to make me feel that way? That is the question. Why would somebody want to do that to another person? Yes, we need to be responsible for our emotions, but other people need to be responsible and held accountable for their behaviour. If you can, at all possible, try to ignore any fly monkeys. Try to ignore any gossip because gossip, the more you respond, the more you react to that gossip, the more people have to go on, the more people can twist and turn the story to their narrative to feed more people the gossip. The less you play the game, the more you stay in your own lane, the less that person has to go on to use against you because nobody's getting anything from you. you the more you stay out of the gossip, the sooner, unfortunately, they will find something else to gossip about. If at all possible, save any evidence. A narcissist is very good at going through court systems when things aren't going their way. So save any evidence you can to messages, emails, anything you can to help back up what you're saying because quite often with a narcissist it does become your word against theirs. So watching your behaviour, watching your emotional responses and saving any possible evidence that you can. Document it. As hard as it is because it's natural for us to want to defend ourselves it's natural for us to want to defend our intentions it's natural for us to want to defend our name our motives who we are as a person how we think or how we feel when someone is saying it in a way which is not true when someone is stealing our truth from us but when in this situation the best thing you can do is not defend yourself Sometimes by saying nothing, it says everything. Allowing people to make their own minds up, to make their own opinions up, not by your words, but by your actions. So focusing on your life, focusing on your future, focusing on taking care of yourself, focusing on finding your sense of humour, focusing on trying to no longer let the situation get into you because once it's in you it brings you down try and leave the situation as it is on the outside because it's those people on the outside that's gossiping it's those people there that's doing that it's those that are taking me into court to do this so try and leave the situation on the outside of you don't let it on the inside of you and try to focus on the things that you can do within your life to pick you back up. We all have those bad days, we all have those crushing moments, especially when you've got these kinds of people trying to destroy you any way they can. And it is hard, but it's finding the coping mechanisms that work for you. It's finding the way that you can create and look. It's happening, it is happening, it is devastating. But if you let them bring you down, they are succeeding at their smear campaign against you. They are succeeding at getting those flying monkeys to destroy your life. The more we allow them to take us down, the more they are achieving their aim. The more we allow ourselves to process the emotions, allow ourselves to laugh, allow ourselves to care about ourselves, allow ourselves to take a break, allow ourselves to create a new life for us, the more we move away from them and the more the people around us see that, oh, they're not depressed like they said, oh, they're not this like they said, oh, they're not that like they said, oh, look at them, they're, they're now doing this. And yes, it takes time, but if you don't start today, it's going to take longer. Do what works for you. I know I keep linking this video in, but I am again going to link the video into the description on limiting beliefs because our thought process has a lot to do with the life we create for ourselves. Yes, we have obstacles and hurdles to jump over and it is a roller coaster at a time. 
at times but how we think about these things how we move through these things within our life or what helps us get through life i shall also add the video about the narcissist and their smear campaign against you today write a list of the things that make you happy write a list of absolutely everything that makes you happy that makes you smile and see what you can do about getting those things doing those things that make you laugh even if it's a walk in nature just taking photos in nature whatever it is to you find the thing that makes you smile write the list of the things write the list of the things to be grateful for within your life write a list of the things that you've enjoyed doing within your life to discover more who you are as a person thank you very much for listening and i hope everyone has an amazing day bye